by mining the entity web. So I'm going to talk a little bit uh, about that today. I'm going to demonstrate a bunch of software to you. And hopefully you'll uh, uh, walk away with a little bit of information about it. As far as the company goes, we're based uh, again down in Pioneer Square. We're incubated uh, by Paul Allen, uh, co-founder of Microsoft, and funded by Vulcan Capital, Paul Allen's uh, investment arm for technology. Our company spun out of Vulcan in May of 2007, and we're about 30 folks, uh, focused primarily on semantic uh, uh, technologies involving deep natural language processing and distributed computing. We've got uh, multiple patents issued. We've got about five patents so far uh, that are in very core uh, areas of natural language processing involving um, uh, the ability to sort of search at a very large scale uh, into uh, deep uh, triplets uh, style stuff, which you're going to see a lot of in a moment. Uh, and the technology itself that's at every uh, is the culmination of over 20 years worth of total R&D effort. Uh, on uh, natural language processing and search technologies. Every very early in its existence acquired uh, a technology and a team, including myself, uh, that had been working for a number of years uh, building a large-scale distributed deep natural language processing based search and text analysis platform into the DoD and biopharma arenas. Uh, Every is headed up by Will Hunsinger, the former uh, VP uh, of GAP Online. Uh, he was pretty critical in launching uh, the online presence of the GAP. He's also was a CEO at uh, AdEase and is currently, and, and before that was a, uh, a venture partner at uh, Maverick. So let's go ahead and dive in. Uh, I'll start out uh, with a slide here depicting uh, the web. Uh, as I'm sure everyone in this room has uh, knows, the web consists of a web of websites uh, which contain documents on them and they're connected by a hyperlinks. And that's certainly the web that we all know and love, but it turns out that there's another web that's existed since uh, humans wrote down their first sentences. And this is the web of, um, that I call the entity web. It's the web of people, places, organizations, basically things, and these things are talked about every day in the news content uh, that gets uh, published in blog posts that any of you may be publishing as well as others. Uh, in the Twitter tweets that we tweet about, in Facebook status updates, etc. Every day, millions of people are busy writing articles, creating content, and in them they're referencing people, places, famous actors, actresses, sports people, uh, places, locations, city names. Uh, all of these things are bound and connected by uh, uh, links, uh, linguistic links, and I'm going to talk uh, about what that means in a second. So. As I mentioned at the beginning, this uh, talks about discovering content. Uh, every, at its very essence, is, can be boiled down to this one slide. So we're, we provide a content discovery engine, and that discovery engine uh, recommends, so you as a user, you provide sort of two key entry points. You're either going to provide a topic, so you're going to say I'm interested in a you know, particular uh, person, place, thing, uh, phrase, uh, instead of keywords or I'm interested in a body of text. The body of text could be an article, it could be a news post. You might express your interest by being on uh, one of our partner sites, like the Washington Post that I'm going to demonstrate in a bit, and you're actually reading a particular article. It could be as short as a Twitter tweet that you're reading. Uh, it could be a paragraph of text. But in either of those two cases, you sort of express interest in a topic or a body of text, and we recommend to you some media element. And we recommend a lot of different uh, types of media. Of course, news articles, blog posts are two of the key ones. We also recommend things like images, videos, uh, Twitter tweets, sentiment, uh, and networks of entities as well. So how does, what does this have to do with mining the entity web? Basically, you as a human are expressing the topic, which could be one of these people, places, or things that are written about every day in the text that we read. The text itself, you might be referencing, uh, saying, give me some content, inspire me with some, uh, let me discover some new, exciting content related to a particular article. And in that article that you're, you're picking inside of there are entities uh, that are present. And then finally, in the media that we're actually indexing and serving up in our content discovery engine, um, there are entities. Of course, if it's news articles or blog posts the very, or Twitter tweets, the bodies of these media elements themselves contain these people, places, organizations, and things. And in the case of some media elements, like images and videos, uh, we at Every don't uh, yet crack open the, uh, the media item itself and analyze the, uh, the signal, but we do look at the metadata that comes out, so the context surrounding an, an image or the metadata around a particular video, etc. 
So let's uh, take a little bit uh, of a walk back in time. If you guys, uh, everyone here I'm sure was in seventh grade and at some point in seventh grade you learned grammar. Uh, most of us tend to forget our grammar at some point. But uh, here we'll do a little review. So first sentence here is Deep Dillon visits the UW on November 17th. So can somebody here tell me what the grammatical object is of this sentence? That's right. It's the UW. The grammatical subject is Deep Dillon. The action or the verb is the verb visit. And uh, the complement of the preposition uh, is November 17th, for those of you who do well in some of the And this particular graph here is what we, is sort of the key of what we store uh, and what we search and, uh, and what sort of forms the entity web from which we can build the entire every discovery engine. Um, in addition to grammatical subject, verbs, and objects, uh, in the second sentence is a slightly more elaborate um, uh, deep deal in of every, of every is sort of recognized as the suffix modifier of Deep Dillon, the uh, students of UW, um, prefix modifier for UW. So, but that's, that's basically the model that we're talking about. So with that, I'm going to jump in and demo a few things to you. So, the first thing I'm going to demo is a geeky interface um, that our scientists and engineers use every day to build higher level functionality on. And you can play with this if you go to Every's Garden page, which if you scroll down to the bottom of every.com, you'll, you'll be able to navigate to. So here what I'm doing is I'm saying, you know, tell me all of the countries that produce copper. And so what this interface uh, lets us do is lets you sort of tap into the, the lower level technology that's, that's available to our scientists and engineers and that we're continuously building on our back end. And you'll see in the left column here, a list of countries uh, that actually uh, are producers of copper. And if we drill into a particular one, in this case Chile, we'll notice that there is um, a sentence here called, uh, from which we derive this particular relationship. And the sentence reads, Ch Chile is the world's top copper producer, mining about a third of global supply. We'll also notice in a subsequent sentence stated slightly differently, Chile is the world's uh, largest producer of copper, uh, in another sentence here, down below, uh, production at its Escondida mine in Chile, the biggest producer of copper in the world. So, one of the things I want to point out here is, like, despite the sort of myriad different ways with which one can express this relationship of Chile producing copper in unstructured text, these are articles coming in off of news, blog content, etc. We're able to sort of distill this relationship, um, you know, much the way that you, know, you may have in seventh grade grammar class. So let's get a little bit more interesting here, and let's leverage our knowledge base. So I like to describe our system as an army of seventh grade grammar students armed with a really large dictionary or knowledge base. And so we're going to leverage the knowledge base and say, well, don't just give us uh, listings of copper. We're also interested in basically any chemical element. And so here off to the right, we see uh, more things than copper coming in. Uranium, plutonium being produced, uh, carbon, strontium as well as you know, zinc, silver, copper, etc. And so again, we sort of get a... Chemical elements seem like a preset value that you gave it, so that's not like, it's not interpreting your natural language there, right? What's happened, yeah, you're going to find out exactly what that means in a second, but basically we've got, so the system is Army 7th grade grammar students armed with a large knowledge base. The knowledge base, uh, within it, we've got a few thousand different categories that are sort of a priori defined. We're going to talk about that in a little bit. And within that, um, across these sort of few million household named entities, exist um, these sorts of categorizations. And so that's how we're mapping chemical element to these particular ones. And then when we actually sort of correlate that with the grammatical structures, that's when we're going into the unstructured text. But yeah, that's, that's a good question. Please jump in at any point in time with a question. It's always more exciting and it tends to keep everyone awake, so don't be shy. But you might have to scream because I'm trying to hold the mic, navigate the laptop, and uh, talk at the same time, so I'm, I might miss you visually. So let's do another uh, quick query here. Um, slightly different query. So now I'm, I'm gonna say to the system, hey, give me a listing of all of the companies uh, that acquired other companies. And so here, within a few seconds, or less than a second, we're able to sort of distill thousands of relationships that typically humans are involved in distilling. So these kinds of facts, um, you know, usually what happens is you'll go to a major search engine, you'll type in a keyword search, 